you have to understand the role you play. And when you understand that, you have to do it really well. It's like maximize and do, do as best you can in the role that you fill. And the quicker that you understand that role and the quicker you understand how to do the extra work or whatever you need to, to get to that point, he said, then you're adding massive value. Welcome to the Matt Phillips podcast. I am Matt Phillips, your sales leadership coach, mental toughness expert, and founder of Matt Phillips Coaching. Well, welcome to today's podcast. Matt, back with you. And I today wanted to dive into some lessons that I learned from some recent interviews that I just had. And as I mentioned before, we have a student athlete leadership program focused on teaching student athletes at the high school club and collegiate level about the mental game, right? How to develop into great leaders. And part of that program that is branded under Pro Athlete Advantage is we actually have a interview series. So we actually call it Masters of the Game, or an exclusive interview series with Athletic Titans. And I, I kind of like that name, first of all, um, which I give credit to my wife, Shannon, who's listening to me right now from the other room. Uh, she's the one who really came up with it. So I love that name. But as part of it, we have uh, a lot of uh, college coaches. We have professional coaches from you know NBA, MLB, NHL, on, and we have professional athletes as well and, and Olympians. And we the whole goal is how do we provide a perspective? Just like this podcast today, right? This podcast is about giving leaders in business a perspective on how to get more out of themselves, more out of their people, and just show up better leaders, right? Well, that whole purpose is how do we give you know high school club and collegiate coaches a perspective on how the best of the best do it? Uh, best athletes and coaches and learn these tips and tricks and all these things and stories to be able to go tell their student athletes. That's really the goal of that podcast. And, or excuse me, I should say interview series because it's not a podcast. It's actually on YouTube only. And so that's just the place where we've decided to house it. And so I love doing it just like I love doing this podcast, having guests on, doing these solo episodes with you. And today I wanted to go through my biggest takeaways from two uh, individuals that I interviewed for that exclusive interview series. Uh, one is a man named Chad Forcier. He is a 26-year NBA coach veteran. He has been with multiple teams. He's won an NBA championship as an assistant coach with the Milwaukee Bucks. Uh, just great human being. Uh, and the other is a man named Jason Terry, who goes by the nickname of Jet. And you may have seen him play in the past with the Dallas Mavericks and other teams, won an NBA championship with the Dallas Mavericks, played at University of Arizona, where they won a national championship. And these are just two of the individuals that we have had on this interview series so far. And both of them had some really interesting takeaways that I wanted to share with you today. And I, I know they're going to be helpful for you in you know, the people you deal with and you just showing up as a leader. And frankly, some of these might be helpful if you have kids, that you share some of these stories with them. I think it's important, you know, we have our three children and I'm sure, I, I, I know, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure about it. I know with 100% certainty that they get tired of the stories that I tell about people that I speak with and, you know, these lessons and, and secrets to success and mental toughness and all these sorts of things. Although I do know they're listening, right? And, and sometimes when you tell stories about what someone else said, something else you heard, they're more open to hearing those things. So especially when I'm talking with student athletes, when I'm talking with business leaders, if you and I have ever worked one-on-one -on -one together, a lot of times I tell stories, right? In this podcast, I tell stories just about my life or others' lives because it lands differently than like mom or dad saying something to their kids or a boss telling their team about something, right? It's telling a story. It's just better well-received. So a little tip for you there. But let me start with... A Chad Forcier first. There were two things that really stuck out from this interview. Again, he's worked multiple teams as an NBA coach. And so he's seen a lot of different players come through, a lot of different cultures. Uh, one thing that's interesting about his background, his longest longest tenure with a team was nine years. And I, I think I'm right with that. I might, I might be off a year or two, but nine years with the San Antonio Spurs. And the coach still to, there to this day is Greg Popovich. And, and Greg Popovich was all about culture. How do you build a team that is about each other? And that's about winning, of course, but it's how do we you know, build each other up, things like that. So when Chad and I were talking, one thing he brought up was 
that you have to be very uh, crystal clear of what type of culture you want to create and what type of people you're wanting to accept into your team. And he said, you know, so when we go into drafting players, when we go into training for players, uh, when we pick up free agents, we are hyper vigilant on who we pick up and why, because they have to be a right culture fit. So if you are trying to build a culture where it's like a team built of people who like just are positive and build each other up and want the best for each other. And then you insert one player who's extremely selfish, who is demeaning. That's going to ruin your culture, isn't it? And so Chad talked extensively about how, you know, they have so many discussions about a, like, do we understand who we're going after and why, right? What type of culture we're trying to protect. And, you know, you may be at a stage where you even know what culture is like, I don't even know what I want to create. And that's, that's a whole thing, right. Of sitting down and starting to define that you may have a culture and maybe you just need to protect it better. And I found that very interesting, right. I, you know, he made a comment that, you know, they brought in certain players and this is, you know, variety of different teams in the past that, you know, you bring them on and you find quickly, they're not a culture fit. Well, reality is they're not around that long that they move on to the next team or you release them or something like that. And I, that speaks to me to just when you have something that's so special, it's like your, like our family, right? I want to do anything and everything I can to protect my family, right? I don't want any harm to come to the family. I want them to be, you know, as happy as possible and learn and grow and do all these things. And you have to protect that and you have to be intentional with that. And you have to be, sometimes you have to go slow to go fast, if you know what I mean. And that's something that has to be a daily focus. And I think same thing in business when we're building teams, right? If, if we are creating this culture or have this culture in front of us, that has to become our precious thing. And everybody needs to know what that is and be willing to move people off of that. So I found that very, very interesting that what a parallel between building an NBA basketball team and a team at work. The second thing he said, which I found really interesting. So I was asking him, you know, what are the, what's the number one ingredient to, you know, making a great player, right? Making that, that dessert, that, that NBA player. I mean, it's a horrible analogy, but, but what's one of the key ingredients that you look for when drafting or bringing players to the team? And he talked about it in a number of different things, but one that stuck out in particular that I really, really liked. And the word he used was, competitiveness. He said, we want to find players who like to compete. And of course, that means competing to win a game, of course. But he said, more important to me is I want to find a, an athlete who competes with themselves, right? They're trying to compete with themselves to figure out how do I become better? How do I optimize my skill, my talent, my mindset, everything? They want those types of athletes walking through the door. Because when you have a competitive athlete like that, who just wants to find out how good they can be, then, I mean, coaching, leading becomes a heck of a lot easier, doesn't it? I mean, you give someone like that a tip or some feedback and my goodness, they'll have it implemented the next day. It's because they compete with themselves to be the best they can be. And I love that side of it, right? Because, you know, I've seen, you know, certain individuals in athletics who, I mean, they're just, they've got this talent level that's like amazing, but they just don't have this competitiveness. Like they want nothing to do with the sport or they show up differently in practice than they do in games. And I've always, I'm always of the belief that like, especially in athletics, right? We, we play like we practice. I think the same thing is true in business of like the way we show up for every meeting, like one meeting is the way we show up for every meeting or it should be, right? We have to look at our processes and our systems and the way we prospect and do all these things. And it's not comparing yourself to other people and competing, being like, oh, what are the other salespeople doing? Or what are the other functions or divisions doing? You can look at that and just gain information from it, but it's looking internally and saying, how do we compete with ourselves? How do we compete to be the best that we can be on a daily basis? And that right there, I believe, changes habits. It changes the way you approach meetings. It changes the way that you do process improvements. It increases creativity and in how you attack prospecting or processes or like any of these things. But it's that inner competitiveness that Chad looks for when he's going to draft players, right? And when he's talking to all the different coaches on the staff, that's what he's looking for. 
does this guy in this case, because they play in the NBA, but apply this to the WNBA or any sport, men or women, does that person have the inner competitiveness that we need to, that's going to be a massive addition to this team? And sometimes the answer is yes, sometimes the answer is no. Sometimes you get in, you're like, ooh, I thought they were, but not really. And I will just love that perspective, that inner competitiveness, that competitiveness with self. And so I wonder if you can, you know, picture someone in your mind right now who you work with, or maybe worked with in the past, maybe that you want to work with, who just has that mentality. Like they just want to be their best selves. And I've come across those people where I remember this, this one guy, Jeff, who I used to work with, man, he just had something where he wanted to be good, like really good. And so he was always learning. He was always pushing me to be better. And this was early in my career, but he was just competitive and not just with me trying to get the best out of myself, but I always saw him trying to figure out how do we do things better? How do we do things more efficiently? How do we, and this is in like audit and accounting back in the day. You know, I'll never forget that about him. He was just fun to work with. This other guy, Brad, that I worked with at a different company, same thing. He had this chip on his shoulder that he just carried around and he wanted like great things to happen for all of us individually and for our the work we were doing at this uh, consumer foods company. And I don't know, he just wanted to be good, right? And how we were doing things. And he had this inner competitiveness that, I still admire to this day. So there's all these people. I'm sure you can come up with people that, you know, good and bad, who some people just didn't care. Well, they're no fun to work with. Um, but then the people who really, it's like, those are the types of people you want to surround yourself with. Um, I have this other guy, Ryan, who actually just lives not too far from me, as a matter of fact. And he worked with me years ago. And man, that guy when I just watch him work and when you kind of just observe him and the way he thinks and the action that he takes, it's like next level. He just, when he wakes up in the morning, this is the way I describe Ryan. When he wakes up in the morning, I believe his feet hit the floor and he's like, we're going to go make things happen today. And I want to be the best. and I want to make a difference and let's do really quality work. And I love being around that guy. It's so fun. We go on walks now um, because we live close to each other. We'll do like walking meetings uh, to catch up as, as friends now. And um, it's just so fun, right? I mean, who, who goes on a walk to get caught up? First of all, that's always a suggestion. Like, let's go on a walk or go on a bike ride, something like that. I'm like, this is awesome. I mean, he's pushing me to be better. That's that inner competitiveness. So I, I could go on and on about Chad, I, but those two things, I think really stuck out to me in these interviews, right? The first of like the very clear understanding of the culture you're trying to create and protecting the culture. And you just have to be, you know, start asking the right questions around to protect that, make sure the people that come in or they just emulate that. They understand that. And the second uh, inner competitiveness, which I just loved. I wanted to take a quick break from the podcast to invite you to something very special that we're up to at Matt Phillips Coaching. It's what we call the High Performance Leadership Program. Now, we know that leading people can be challenging. It also can be extremely rewarding. And one thing that I found as you progress in the leadership and want to take that next level, get that promotion, continue to move up the ladder is you have to continually invest in yourself. And you have to set yourselves apart from other people. And you have to continue to not only grow as a leader, but you have to grow your mental toughness, your mindset, because that is the one true differentiator. That's exactly why we built the High Performance Leadership Program, to come alongside you on a monthly basis, to give you the tools, training, and resources, and coaching with me to help you elevate your performance. So I invite you to head over to mattphillipscoaching.com slash membership and join us today in the High Performance Leadership Program. Let's make your dreams and your career and your business a reality. The second interview that I told you about was Jet. So Jason Terry, and I remember watching him play back in the day, um, and he, I had so much fun on the interview with him. You know, he talked a lot about, uh, you know, the first point he really brought up was, you know, understanding your role. Because I had asked him this question of, you know, what's the, if you're talking to athletes, 
who wanted to play at the professional level, right? And you're comparing the high school, collegiate, and professional levels. What's the difference? Like, what do you have to do to make that up the top, right? And clearly, talent helps, right? To be able to shoot a, a basketball. But he talked a lot about like, you have to understand the role you play. And when you understand that, you have to do it really well. It's like maximize and do, do as best you can in the role that you fill. And the quicker that you understand that role and the quicker you understand how to do the extra work or whatever you need to, to get to that point, he said, then you're adding massive value. Then people will understand like, oh, I understand what that person does, like how they do it, what the value is. And he said that alone opens up an opportunity at the next level for you. And he said, even if you get to the professional level, you still have to understand like, what is my role here? And, and he talked about uh, one point in his career, he, you know, switched teams and, you know, he said on an interview, he's like six to 185 pounds. So not huge for the NBA. Right. But he said, I understood my role and I would stay right on the perimeter and I'd just bomb threes. And he said, I wasn't scared to go in the middle, but I also knew that, you know, at some point I've got to be smart and use my gifts to the fullest. Right. So his job was to distribute and to shoot and play on the perimeter. And that was his role. And he switched to his team one time and he was replacing like a pretty well-known player. And all of a sudden he started playing a little bit poorly because he felt that his, this the role of the other guy who had left was like Mr. Assist, like rarely shoot. I mean, assisting left and right. And Jet said he felt like he had to become that person to fit a role. And the coach sat him to the side and he said, Hey, I see you're not performing well. And he said, well, I, I don't know. I'm just trying to be like, and he goes, whoa, 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 no, no, no. We brought you in to be jet, not this guy. So it's understand what role you can play to make the team successful. And I always love that, right? Because sometimes, you know, you know, I, I think back to my baseball days where, you know, I was never a home run hitter. I mean, I, I think I hit two in my entire life. Um, yeah, I think two. Yeah, it's two. Um, that's not a lot, is it? I three, actually. I thought of another one. So three. But I was a line drive ground ball hitter. That's who I was, right? And I remember getting to certain points where I'd be frustrated, you know, when I'm not hitting well. And all of a sudden, I'd, you know, talk to the coach and be like, do I need to start dropping bombs and hitting home runs and, you know, trying to be someone that I'm not? And I think sometimes we lose sight of that, right? Of, of you know, understanding our role but also maximizing. I should have been talking to the coaches about like, how do I hit better ground balls? How do I hit better line drives? Um, how do I get the ball to carry further so it gets further in the gap so I can have, you know, better base, right? More bases. So instead of a single, it's a double. Instead of a double, it's a triple. How do I maximize that? And I, and I lost sight sometimes of my role. And I think sometimes, you know, when I look at back at my career, you know, I might have had a certain role, but I would take on this, almost pressure, if you will, you know, it didn't exist of other people's roles. Like I had to somehow assume responsibility for what they did too, because maybe they weren't doing a good job or I didn't feel like I could rely on them. And like, all of a sudden I had to start to fill a different role, which is not in my skill set. Right. I, I, you know, coming from an, uh, starting my career in accounting and an audit, it's funny. Uh, data is super important, right? I think, in any role, data is important. But here's the deal. I'm good at it, but it sucks the life out of me. It just it takes so much energy. Again, I'm good at it, but my preference is not to sit in a spreadsheet all day. It's to be out in front of people recording a podcast, like doing all this stuff, right? And sometimes I'd lose sight of my role of like, oh, I, I got to be better at data. I got to love data. And it's like, no, you don't have to love data. You have to do enough and, and spend the right amount of energy to get the answer we need. Or you need to ask for help and you need to find someone who loves the stuff, whose role is like they're data gurus and let them help you be successful. And so it's not saying we can delegate everything or get rid of the things that we don't really like to do. I mean, I still to this day have to look at data for the business, right? And that could be uh, email uh, open rates and all these certain things. So I want to make sure you guys are opening emails I send you. And I want to make sure looking at podcast downloads, I, I want to make sure you guys are actually opening the podcast and listening to the podcast and all these different things. 
but I certainly can understand it, but leverage people better than me at it. And so that really stuck out when Jet talked about that, of like understanding your role and then going to work to be the best you can be. Right? Sometimes I hear those, uh, I don't know, different motivational videos that say like, you know, if, if you're the, you know, you're going to be a toilet cleaner, like be the best toilet cleaner. Like if you're going to be the best, if you're going to be a painter, be the best painter. If you're going to be a tax accountant, like be the best tax accountant, right? Because when you're optimized, when you understand the role and when you fill it and do really well, that gets noticed, that gets seen, that's a differentiator. And sometimes in the past, I'd look at that and be like, yeah, I don't know. Like, do I really want to be the best at that? Like that'll pigeonhole me and do all this stuff. But what I've learned is that I believe that's absolutely true, right? Of like every opportunity we're given, it's to maximize the time we have to stand out from other people, to do things that other people weren't willing to do, right? I, in an accounting role, can have this mindset of I'm going to under promise and over deliver, just like I can in this business, right? If I'm recording this podcast, I want to not under promise, over deliver, but I, I, I want to over deliver in all of our programs. Like I want to over deliver. I don't want it to be like everything else. And if I understand that, then I can go to work and I can do that thing. And that's why people stay. That's why people sign up. That's why people like want to be part of what we're doing. And I think the same thing true of any role. Are you looking at it from effect of like, how do I learn as much as I can? How do I add value as much as I can? I just got a call with one of my coaches. What's the phrase he used? I'm, I'm going to pull it up here because I can't remember. Um, yeah. So he said, Matt, I, he, he told me, he's like, I want this rolling around in your head. T-S-V-R. T-S-V-R. That stands for time spent, value received. Time spent, value received. So he goes, like, where you're spending your time, like, what's the value that you've received or others have received from you? It's out the quality of time spent. And that's exactly what Jet's talking about right? Fill the role, do it well, get a tremendous amount of value and give others value because you understood your role and you took pride in it. That's how you differentiate yourself from everybody. That's why uh, Jet, by the way, stayed in the NBA for 19 years. One, nine, 19 years. Do you know how long that is? That's like an eternity when you look at professional sports. Like that is so rare. And part of it said is because he understood his role and he worked really hard at it. Now, the other kind of item that Jet talked about, which I loved, was around this concept of pressure. And, you know, it, when you look at athletics, you know, let's say the NBA finals, which is NBA playoffs are going on as I record this, not the finals yet. But a lot of times when you're watching whatever game, they'll be like, oh my gosh, this you know, they have to make this free throw, like the pressure they must be feeling. And we see it everywhere, right? In business, we have pressure. And I, I'm not here today to talk about internal pressure versus external pressure. That's not what we're here to talk about. I asked Jet on this interview, I said, Jet, um, you've been in some big games. You've played at the highest level. You've played in some, you know, really tough stadiums, places to play. How do you deal with the pressure? He goes, Matt, pressure. He goes, do you want me to tell you what real pressure is? Because playing in the NBA is not pressure. He goes, here's what real pressure is. He said, Matt, I'm the second oldest of 10 kids. I was raised by a single mother. So some days we didn't know if there'd be food on the table, but somehow, maybe not at the time that we wanted it, but somehow my mom would show up with food for us each night. He goes, you want to talk pressure? That's pressure. My mom trying to figure out how to feed 10 kids every single day as a single mom. He goes, that's the perspective I carried into the NBA. And I think it's so important, right? When he said that, I was almost speechless on the, speechless on the interview because I started thinking about all the things in my life and the stories you read and all these things of sometimes when we just put things in perspective for a moment, it changes everything. You know, we understand that what we were we're perceiving as a mountain, right? And I'm not discounting. You may have a mountain, but a lot of times it's really a molehill, not as big as we think, right? And as soon as we start shifting that perspective and understanding that, not that people have it rougher than us or anything like that, but understand that like life is harder other places or we've had instances in our lives perhaps that have been way tougher than whatever we're facing right now. It just changes the perspective. 
And that was so really cool for me to hear from him about how, you know, one of the like best NBA players, you know, who, who was in the league for 19 years, you know, won championships, things like that, that he went into it. Not saying it's easy or anything like that, but just that perspective he carried around of like, my mom was dealing with pressure. Me shooting a free throw in a game or a free three pointer or something like that with a hostile crowd. No, it doesn't compare. And it really doesn't. So I just want you all to, I don't know, maybe take a step back for a minute. Maybe there's something that is overwhelming you and maybe, maybe you just need to shift the perspective a little bit and remember what Jet's mom went through. And, and maybe that'll, I don't know, shift things for you a little bit. So when I look at the back of these interviews with Chad and with Jet, I mean, there was, oh my gosh, so many other takeaways, right? That I just got from, from both of them. And again, we've been so fortunate to have a, just had an NFL quarterback on. Uh, we are having a you know top 15 volleyball college coach on. Uh, we're about to have a four-time Olympian on. Uh, are about to have a another NFL quarterback on. Uh, we've got this volleyball player coming on. We've got this, a couple hockey coaches and hockey players. I mean, I can't wait because we have to learn from their stories and where they've been and how they've gotten to the best of the best level and use that into what we're at today. So for you, if it's Chad's takeaways of like, maybe for you just finding that inner competitiveness of how do you be your best or protecting your culture, right? And defining what that is, or maybe it's Jet, right? Of understanding how to fill your role and do it even better or wanting to shift your perspective on what true pressure really is. I hope you're able to take one of those four and implement something for you today. So with that, thank you so much for your time today on the podcast. I just love doing this every week to get to spend time with you. And thank you for taking your time with me. And can't wait to see you on the next podcast episode. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you for joining us today on the Matt Phillips podcast. If you are like us, we know that you are here to do great things to become the sales leader that makes things happen and drives big time sales results. We know you have that big vision and we are here to help get you where you want to go. We're here to help you develop that like, unstoppable, rock solid leadership skill set and help you train to master the one true differentiator, mental toughness. mental toughness. We would love to be part of your journey. So if you are ready, head over to mattphillipscoaching.com and check out the ways that we can help. As always, Please share this episode and make sure you subscribe by clicking the button below. Thank you again. And now go crush the day.